Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the subset sum problem and its implementation. So let's get started. So in the subset sum problem, we are given a set of numbers and we have to find a subset that sums to a certain number. So we will be given two inputs. So first will be a set of non-negative integers A and a non-negative integer B. For example, in this case, we are given a set of four numbers and the value of the non-negative integer B is 9. So we have to find a subset from this set whose sum is equal to 9 and in this example there is a subset which is 513 whose sum is equal to 9. So the output will be true and the subset will be 513. Now one important thing to note is in the subset sum problem order of numbers in the subset doesn't matter so 513 and 315 are same. Also the subset sum problem is a very common problem and it can be framed in different ways. For example, you are given different weights of 5 kg, 2 kg, 1 kg and 3 kg and you have to find out which weights we should include so that the total weight is exactly 9 kg. Now we can include 5 kg, 1 kg and 3 kg so that the total weight is exactly 9 kg. Another way to look at this problem is suppose you are given coins of different denominations $5, $2, $1 and $3 and you have to make exact change for $9. Now to make change for $9 we will include coins of $5, $1 and $3. So this will give us exact change for $9. Now there are many ways to solve the subset sum problem. We can solve it using naive recursive approach or we can use backtracking. And we can also solve this problem using dynamic programming. So in this video, we will solve the subset sum problem using dynamic programming. And to be specific, we will use the tabulation technique. Now to solve the actual problem, which is given a set of numbers 5, 2, 1 and 3. Is there a subset whose sum is equal to 9? We will first solve the sub problems. So let's see what those sub problems will be. For example, if we are given a set with only one number, which is 5, is there a subset whose sum will be equal to 2? The answer in this case will be false because the set contains only one number, which is 5. So we cannot have a subset whose sum will be equal to 2. Now, similarly, if we are given a set with only one number, which is 5, is there a subset whose sum will be equal to 5? The answer in this case will be true and the subset will contain the only number that we have in the set which is 5. Now if we are given a set of two numbers 5 and 2 is there a subset whose sum will be equal to 2? The answer in this case will be true and the subset will contain the number 2 from the given set. Now if we are given a set of three numbers 5, 2 and 1 is there a subset whose sum will be equal to 6? The answer in this case will be true and the subset will contain two numbers 5 and 1. So we can represent this problem using a two-dimensional array where each cell will contain either true or false. So rows represents the set and the columns represents the sum. So this row will store the solution to subproblems when we don't consider any number from the set. So in this case the set will be empty. And this row will store the solution to subproblems when we consider only first number from the set. And this row will store the solution to subproblems when we consider first two numbers from the set. And this row will store the solution to subproblems when we consider first three numbers from the set. And this row will store the solution to subproblems when we consider all four numbers from the set. Similarly, this column will store the solution to subproblems when the sum is zero. And this column will store the solution to subproblems when the sum is one. And this column will store the solution to subproblems when sum is two. And finally, this column will store the solution to subproblems when sum is 9. So the value stored in this cell will be our result because for this cell we are considering all four numbers from the set and sum is equal to 9. Now let's fill the values in the first row. So for first row, we don't consider any number from the set. So the set will be empty. Now since the set is empty, obviously there will be no subset whose subset sum will be greater than 0. So for all the cases when the subset sum is greater than 0, the value will be false. Now let's fill the values in the first column. So for first column, the subset sum is 0, which means we don't have to include any number in the subset. So regardless of how many numbers from the set we consider, we can always find a subset whose subset sum is 0. So all the values in the first column will be true. Now let's fill the values in the second row. Now for second row, we are only considering the first number from the set, which is 5. 
so when the subset sum is greater than 0 but less than 5 the value will be false because we have only one number in the set which is 5 now when the subset sum is 5 the value will be true because in this case we will include the number 5 in the subset now when the subset sum is greater than 5 the value will be false because we have only one number in the set which is 5 so the value will be false in these four cases now let's fill the values in the third row now for third row we are only considering the first two numbers 5 and 2 so when the subset sum is 1 the value will be false but when the subset sum is 2 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 2 in the subset now when the subset sum is 3 or 4 the value will be false now when the subset sum is 5 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 5 in the subset now when the subset sum is 6 the value will be false and when the subset sum is 7 the value will be true because in this case we can include both the numbers 5 and 2 now when the subset sum is 8 or 9 the value will be false because we cannot achieve subset of subset sum 8 or 9 when we have only two numbers 5 and 2 now let's fill the values in the fourth row now for fourth row we are considering the first three numbers now when the subset sum is 1 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 1 in the subset now when the subset sum is 2 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 2 in the subset now when the subset sum is 3 the value will be true because in this case we can include both the numbers 2 and 1 in the subset now when the subset sum is 4 the value will be false and when the subset sum is 5 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 5 in the subset now when the subset sum is 6 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 5 and 1 in the subset and when the subset sum is 7 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 5 and 2 in the subset and when the subset sum is 8 the value will be true because in this case we can include all the numbers in the subset 5 2 and 1 and when the subset sum is 9 the value will be false now let's fill the values in the last row now for last row we are considering all four numbers from the given set now when the subset sum is 1 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 1 in the subset now when the subset sum is 2 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 2 in the subset now when the subset sum is 3 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 3 in the subset now when the subset sum is 4 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 1 and 3 in the subset now when the subset sum is 5 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 5 in the subset now when the subset sum is 6 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 5 and 1 in the subset now when the subset sum is 7 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 5 and 2 in the subset now when the subset sum is 8 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 5 and 3 in the subset now when the subset sum is 9 the value will be true because in this case we can include the number 5 1 and 3 in the subset now since the value in the last cell is true it means there will be a subset from the given set whose subset sum will be 9 now there are a couple of important things to note about this approach so when the ith number is greater than subset sum j in that case we cannot include the ith number to the subset so dp table ij will be equal to dp table i minus 1j so in this case we will copy the value from the cell above for example for the second row when we are only considering the number 5 from the set now 5 is greater than 1 2 3 and 4 so the value in these four cases will be copied from the cell above so the values in these four cells will be false so dp table 1 1 1 2 1 3 and 1 4 will be false now similarly for this cell now for this row we are also considering the number 2 from the set now since 2 is greater than 1 the value in this cell will be copied from the cell above so dp table 2 1 will be equal to false now the other case is when ith number is not greater than subset sum j so in this case we can include the ith number to the subset so in this case there will be two scenarios for example suppose you are given a set with three numbers 5 2 and 1 and you are asked to find a subset with subset sum 6 now there is a subset with subset sum 6 5 and 1 now if we add one more number to the set there will still be a subset with subset sum 6 so regardless of how many more numbers we add to the set there will still be a subset with subset sum 6 
so if we can achieve a subset with subset sum j by just using i minus 1 numbers then we can definitely achieve subset sum j by using i numbers so it means if dp table i minus 1 j is true then dp table i j will also be true for example for this cell when we are only considering the number 5 from the set and subset sum is 5 the value will be true because in this case we can have a subset with only number 5 now since this value is true the value in the cell below will also be true now since this value is true the value in the cell below will also be true and now since this value is true the value in the cell below will also be true now in this case our set was 5 and in this case the set is 5 2 and in this case the set is 5 2 1 and in this case the set is 5 2 1 3 now the second scenario is when the value in the cell above is not true so in this case we will try to include the ith number and we will see what is the value in dp table when we had only i minus 1 numbers and the subset sum was j minus ith number now why j minus ith number because we are trying to include the ith number so subset sum will be reduced to j minus ith number for example to fill the value in this cell we have to know the result of the sub problem when we did not have number 5 in the set and the subset sum was 0 so we will move one row above and five columns back so we will move to this cell when the set is empty and the subset sum is 0 since the value in this cell is true the value in this cell will be true let's see some more examples so dp table 1 6 will be false because dp table 0 1 is false and dp table 2 7 will be true because dp table 1 5 is true and dp table 4 9 will be true because dp table 3 6 is true now let's figure out which numbers we included in the subset to make the subset sum 9 so we will start with the last cell and compare its value with the cell above now both the values are different it means we included the number 3 in the subset so we will go one row above and three columns back three columns back because we have included the number 3 in the subset now we will compare this value with the cell above again both the values are different it means we included the number 1 in the subset so we will go one row above and one column back one column back because we included number one in the subset now we will compare this value with the cell above now both the values are same it means we did not included the number two in the subset so we will go one row above now we will compare this value with the cell above now both the values are different it means we included the number five in the subset now we will go one row above and five columns back now we are in this cell now the subset sum is 0 it means we don't have to compare anymore so the subset will have numbers 3 1 and 5 now let's see the implementation so we have a app class and in the main method we have a numbers array which denotes the set and we have an integer sum which denotes the subset sum then we create an object of subset sum problem class passing the numbers and sum to the constructor then we call the solve problem method and next we call the has solution method and if it is true we call the print solution method which will print the subset in the subset sum problem class we have three properties dp table which is a two-dimensional array of booleans numbers which is a 1d array and sum which is an integer in the constructor we set the properties now dp table will have as many rows as the length of numbers array plus one because we have the case when the set is empty Similarly, it will have as many columns as sum plus 1 because we have the case when the subset sum is 0. This class also has three methods, solve problem, has solution and print solution. In the solve problem method, we first fill the value of the base cases. So all the values in the first row starting from the second column will be false. That's why we are starting from j is equal to 1. Similarly, all the values in the first column will be true. So we are starting from i is equal to 0 then we have a nested for loop to fill all the values in the dp table now if the ith number is greater than subset sum in that case we cannot include the ith number in the subset so we will copy the value from the cell above otherwise there will be two scenarios now if the value in above cell is true the value in this cell will also be true now if the value in above cell is not true in that case else block will be executed and we will copy the value from one row above 
and as many columns back as the value of that number. One important thing to note is whenever we are accessing the ith number, we are accessing it as row index minus 1 because the array indexes start with 0. Now in the hash solution method, we check the value of the last cell in the dp table and if it is true, we print the statement and return true. Otherwise, we print no feasible solution and return false. In the print solution method, we will start from the last cell. So column index will be equal to sum and row index will be equal to numbers.length. Now while column index is greater than 0 or row index is greater than 0, we will compare the values. If the value in this cell and the value in the cell above are same, it means we don't include that number. So in that case, we just decrement the row index by 1. Now if both the values are not same, it means we include the number. So in that case, we will decrement the column index by the value of that number and we will decrement the row index by 1. Now let's run the code and see the result. So there is a subset with subset sum 9 and the subset will contain numbers 3, 1 and 5. Now let's change the subset sum from 9 to 8 and save it and run again. So there is a subset with subset sum 8 and the subset will contain numbers 1, 2 and 5. For this case we have more than one solution. For example we can have a subset with numbers 5 and 3. That will also result in a subset with subset sum 8. Now let's change the subset sum from 8 to 11 and save it and run again. So there is a subset with subset sum 11 and the subset will contain numbers 3, 1, 2 and 5. Now let's change the subset sum from 11 to 12 and save it and run again. So there is no feasible solution in this case. Now you can get the code from here.